Hello everyone and welcome back to a critical retrospective. I apologize that this video has taken a really long time to complete. I had a bit of a sore throat a few weeks ago and so I had to spend time recovering from it. But there comes a time in someone's life when they just have to shut up and get back on their feet. And so here we are. I asked you guys in a poll a few weeks ago about which season I should rank all the episodes in next and the vast majority of you guys said season 5. And so here we are now because I am determined to give my audience what they want. Season 5 is a very interesting case in terms of reviewing a season. There are some parts to the season that make me wonder if I should look away, and there are other episodes where I just can't take my eyes off of it. Season 5 is very unpredictable and has lots of twists and turns and I couldn't predict where some of the storylines would go by the end. Don't get me wrong, I'm going to be fairly critical of some of the episodes, if not a lot of the episodes, but I have some great stuff to say as well. Season 5 really benefited from having a great season like Season 4 to springboard off of. The groundwork laid out by the Season 4 finale inherently made Season 5 incredibly interesting. A bunch of characters were actually given some much needed character growth, which I love. Albeit, some of the character growth this season happened way too late, and some of this stuff should have happened seasons earlier, honestly. But I should really get started on ranking the episodes before I run out of things to say because I expended it all on the intro, so let's get going, shall we? As is tradition, let's start with last place. Action is actually so boring. <laughs> it is completely detached from the rest of the continuity of season 5 and it's just a dumb plastic special. Ugh, my exposure to generic trite like this is making me very impatient whenever I see it in something I truly like. Maybe I should stop ranting and raving and actually get into why this episode gets on my nerves so much. First of all, for the final episode of season 5, it is unbelievably boring and underwhelming. Historically, the final episode of every season is an incredibly plot filled and important one. Volpina introduces the character Lila Rossi and gives us the first taste of someone who actually hates Ladybug. Mayora introduces Natalie as the Peacock Miraculous Holder and gives Hawkmoth an ally for Season 3. In Miracle Queen, Mastafu sacrifices himself and Ladybug becomes the new Guardian of the Miraculous. Strike Back is absolutely insane. And now, here we are. Don't use plastic. It's bad. <laughs> I touched on this a little bit in the Mega Leech section of my first video, but I don't like it when cartoons try to tackle real world issues and fumble the bag. Again, cartoons are my escape. I don't want to be reminded of real world issues while I'm watching things while I'm eating my cereal in the morning. Now I must pause and remind you again that this is just my opinion. If you love seeing cartoons try to tackle real world issues, that's great. Everyone's different and everyone's welcome here on my channel, so feel free to disagree with me in the comments. I really don't mind. It's just that we're coming off the heels of a really crazy finale and whether or not it's good crazy or bad crazy we'll get to later. However it's undeniable that the season finale was really eventful and then we just follow up with this. Things don't get interesting until Gabriel puts on the butterfly miraculous and becomes monarch and akumatizes somebody, which is what I love about the show, come on. The fight's still boring as all heck, but at least it's not as boring as PowerPoint presentations. You know, when the list of episodes for season 5 were revealed, people were kind of going crazy about this mysterious 27th episode called Action. I heard theories that it could have been an epilogue episode showing us what happened after Gabriel made the wish. But no, it's just a... It's just a plastic special about why plastic is bad, which uh, is just so boring. Honestly, I'm really strapped for things to say, guys. Have mercy on me. I personally just don't like it when shows and cartoons just try to cram real-world stuff down my throat, and you're perfectly welcome to disagree with me on that front. Action is just a mess of expectations and a mess in all of itself. It's a complete tonal mess because it comes immediately after one of the craziest miraculous episodes to date. It's a mess in terms of its characters because Milan and Ivan have cared about the environment before but never to this extent and so they've been flounderized. Mega Leech last season and this episode both serve Milan and Ivan's characters really poorly. There's more to their characters than just being followers of the Lorax cult and yet the writers just don't seem to care. And finally it's a mess in terms of its message which it is undoubtedly saying plastic is bad but then they defeat King of Plastic by covering him in plastic. Action is telling me that plastic is bad, but it's showing me something else because plastic saved the day and defeated the villain. So yeah, it is pretty much a mess in almost all fronts. 
Thanks, Burrito Foundation. You sure gave us a good episode to remember for the history books. Anyway, let's move on. I talked about derision a little bit in my Chloe video, but I'm glad that this is an opportunity for me to go into how much it breaks everything. This episode is about Marinette and Adrian going out to the swimming pool, and yet Marinette is getting really jumpy and panicky for no reason, and she has to find out why she feels this way about the pool. And so we are treated to a very lovely flashback about Marinette's life in the previous school year. In this flashback, we learn that she used to have a crush on Kim, which is a thought that keeps me awake at night. And she wasn't a stuttering, stammering mess every time she got so much as five meters close to him. She was very direct and to the point in her confession to him. And so Kim offers her a gift inside a little ring case, and yet it turns out it contains spiders, which caused Marinette to fall off of the diving board and into the pool. The whole thing was a setup by Chloe because she just loves to torment Marinette. And Marinette walks away from the incident forever changed. I'll never tell another boy that I love him before I know everything about him. Whether he's kind or not, thoughtful, what he does outside of school, and with who, I'll know everything. His birthday, all his first names, his schedule, his favorite things. And above all, I'll make sure that he is not friends with Chloe. Okay, so now we know why Marinette stalks Adrian, because she's scared of the same thing happening again. But this is a weird explanation for a weird problem. Marinette stalking Adrian shouldn't have been justified in my opinion. It should have either been corrected or not written at all in the first place. Because it sends a really bad message to the target audience that it's okay to stalk somebody if you have feelings for them. And yes, I do have sympathy for Marinette. This is a really horrible situation that she got thrown in when it wasn't her fault. But it doesn't justify the weird stalkerish actions that she takes in order to get close to Adrian nearly every episode. And her meltdowns at the pool don't really make much sense because she's been there plenty of times before and was perfectly fine. And she spent plenty of time with Kim and they've had very positive interactions. From the way they interacted in seasons 1 and 2 and 3, you never would have guessed that Kim did something to ruin Monette's life like this. And so the writers pull this incomprehensible storyline out of thin air in order to justify Monette's stalking and to make Chloe even worse than she was before. Not to mention how angry Cat Noir gets gets that dark humour Kim's akumatized form just because of a prank that he pulled a year ago. Adrian's character has really regressed since he just became Marinette's boyfriend and not much else. Adrian's personality is now I love Marinette, and Chloe's personality is now I hate Marinette. Characters have now been watered down to their most basic traits, and it's really boring to see. Okay, now I finished my hit piece on derision, so let's move on to the next episode. Marinette. Make sure that Adrian never knows about the villain that I was, but instead, that he remembers the times I tried to be a good father. No! 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 This finale is the absolute worst finale in the entire show, even surpassing Miracle Queen. This episode had five seasons worth of build-up and it still managed to completely destroy any hope that I might have had going into part one. First off, the villains of this episode are really underwhelming and boring. The final villains of the final-ish season of the Gabriel Agrest arc is these dumb android alliance ringed villains. And that's not even beginning to mention the fact that Marinette fights Monarch alone. Adrian slash Cat Noir doesn't have any part to play in his own father's comeuppance. Even after Miracle Queen and all the bad storylines that came about in the show, at least we had this. A storyline of Ladybug and Cat Noir finally facing Hawk Moth at the end of the show and Cat Noir learning who his father really was and coming to peace with that seemed like a given. You can't ruin that, can you? Well, I think we underestimate the idiocy of the writers. Marinette finds Emily frozen in the basement on her own. Adrian has absolutely no part in this revelation for some reason. Ladybug and Cat Noir should have both been here to fight Monarch together. It's just such a bafflingly stupid decision to leave Cat Noir out of the final fight. Adrian's been treated like dirt by his father all season, and so the catharsis coming from Adrian finally taking his father down would have been great for the audience and himself. He would have finally had his own autonomy and independence and stopped being his father's puppet. Imagine if Adrian and Gabriel talked about how Emily's disappearance affected both of them and worked together to find a solution instead of Marinette who really feels out of place this scene. She literally tries talking Gabriel down and de-transforms. What? Turn up. <laughs> oh, who could have seen that coming?
Me. I saw that coming. Why did you trust him? You fool! So Gabriel succeeds in ambushing Marinette, steals the ladybug and black cat miraculouses, and wins! He makes the wish! So in the end, after all the supremely awful things that he's done, Gabriel gets what he wanted in the end, and now he's painted as a hero. So Gabriel recreated the world, and now I'm not really sure if anybody's real or if these are just replacements. If Gabriel destroyed and remade the world, are these the same characters we grew to know and love over eight years? <sighs> I'd rather not dwell on that. All the alliance rings that were hijacked by Monarch have been recycled to design the statue in honor of the great Gabriel Agreste, beyond the visionary entrepreneur and the genius creator. It's the hero who we celebrate today. And tomorrow, it's his legacy that I will continue to carry on. W wait what The ladybug gave it to me. She told me how my father helped her to defeat Monarch at the cost of his life. <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever manage to be like him. What? <laughs> wow! Why? What is that? Okay, let me get this straight. Marinette didn't tell Adrian that Gabriel and Monarch are the same person. Adrian is under the impression that his father is a hero. This isn't fair at all. Adrian did not get the closure that he rightfully deserved. Ugh, this is so terrible. I don't have the energy to talk about it anymore. I might save it for a future video essay. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention Lila is here as well, but honestly, who cares? <laughs> all she really did was appear twice or three times this episode, lurk in the shadows, and act like she had a really cool intelligent plan, when really everything that worked in her favor happened by sheer luck and coincidence. Honestly, this episode is just the epitome of the word disappointing. I'm just left wondering about why we spent eight years of our lives watching this show only to be left with this sorry display of a finale. However, recreation does not exist in a vacuum. It comes paired with another episode, which we will talk about next. In my opinion, the first part of the finale confirmation is slightly better than recreation because there was still potential here. Gabriel was the villain and they weren't trying to pretend that he wasn't evil, so that's a plus. But almost everything else is completely atrocious. First of all, Ladybug confronts Latterly at the Agrest Mansion and I'm super surprised about all the crazy monarchy stuff that she finds. Even though none of this should really be a shock because Felix and Kagami literally told Marinette last episode that Gabriel is monarch. Did she just forget the events of what happened literally a day prior? Furthermore, Gabriel continues to be the worst father ever and psychologically torments his own son and traps him in this really weird prison place. And armed with the knowledge that he celebrated as a hero after all of this is really a slap in the face. According to my calculations, there are approximately 17 million better ways to write this finale. And the absolute worst part about all of this is that this is the last episode in which Adrian has any kind of major role. Adrian thinks that it's too dangerous to fight as Cat Noir because of the nightmares from Night Tormentor and so he gives Plague the Cat Miraculous, telling him to give it to somebody else. And so he lies down on the prison bed hoping that Ladybug will save the day somehow. And that's the end of his relevance in the finale. The show is called Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, but apparently the writers wanted to leave the second most important hero out of the climactic battle for some reason. It was so easy to just incorporate Adrian into this finale and they actively chose not to. It's like they're trying to get on my nerves. Literally the only good thing I can say about this episode is the confrontation between Natalie and Ladybug. It's really tense and you can really tell that Natalie is holding on for dear life. Life because she's really at death's door right now. And then she just dies before our very eyes and Ladybug is left shaking her corpse. But that doesn't really save the episode in my eyes because there's so much wrong with this finale so tiny good parts can't save it. Honestly, I'm just sick of talking about this finale. It's draining me and I have to move on before I go insane. Hopefully the next episode won't be mind-numbingly stupid. Representation is weird. That's pretty much it. Okay, okay, I'll talk about it a little bit more than that. It takes place immediately after the last episode Revolution in which Adrian was forced to go to London. Marinette is really upset about this and so Felix and Kagami decide to exploit that. <laughs> they want to be able to love each other freely and so they enlist the help of Marinette who Kagami knows is Ladybug and has since the episode Perfection. But Kagami got akumatized in that episode. And as we learn in the episode Migration, if Monarch senses further emotions, he'll be able to 
tell if somebody knows Ladybug's identity. So, how was Kagami able to keep this a secret from Monarch? Luca was written out of the show because it was too dangerous for him to know Ladybug and Cat Noir's identities and still remain in Paris. It's just weird that Kagami gets to get away scot-free even with this knowledge. But anyway, Felix creates a senti monster of a projector to show Marinette the truth of the aggressed family dynamic. So Marinette's going to learn about what's going on with the aggressed family. Finally, just gonna tell it to us straight. I'm looking forward to this. What? Oh my queen, how I look forward to seeing our child. Thanks to him, our lineage will continue and our family will reign over the kingdom for eons to come. But the queen did not give birth to one child, but to two little girls. What, what does this have to do with the aggressed family? The firstborn, serious and brazen, despite the hero was making clothes so magnificent that they revealed the princess to please her parents, resigned herself to marry a wealthy, though heartless lord of Unfair! Why should you be the one who came after his son was born? The lord of war fell away, so we went to the house of the king. Only then was he able to make an exchange. So basically, Felix and Kagami tell the story about how Adrian and Felix are senti monsters and how they were born and how Gabriel is monarch in the form of a really weird stage play. I could barely tell who was who and which characters were supposed to be portrayed on screen. This is just so odd and I get secondhand embarrassment from watching it honestly. I think they were trying to make it super cool or dramatic but I honestly found it really cheesy and hard to watch. Is Felix meant to be Gabriel in this shot? Is that Felix's father? I really think that this should have just been a flashback episode played completely straight. Actually show me these characters not just Felix and Kagami playing them, that's stupid. Really, my biggest problem with this episode is just this weird, awkward, sidesteppy, wishy-washy, cringy, not really a flashback flashback. As a positive, I kind of liked the fight against Naito Mentor. It was nice for Cat Noir and the Resistance to get some spotlight. Especially Cat Noir, he barely had anything. It was nice to see Cat Noir tell Gabriel how it really is and how he really feels while behind the mask. But the cringy stage play really takes up way too much of this episode's runtime for its own good, and for that I think it deserves this spot. Oh well, these episodes can't all be winners, can they? Moving on. Revolution is built on an absurd premise, that being Chloe being the mayor of Paris. This all happened because last episode Andre resigned, and so Chloe steps in to govern Paris until an election is held, which it won't be held because this is Chloe we're talking about. As part of his grandmaster plan, Monarch shows up at City Hall and offers Chloe a deal. He will akumatize Chloe and give her miraculous powers through his alliances. That way Chloe won't look like a hypocrite for banning superpowers while she herself has them. It's an interesting interesting idea, but again, this doesn't make any sense. Monarch's plan would not have succeeded if Chloe wasn't the mayor, and realistically, Chloe shouldn't be the mayor because she's 14 years old. If anybody from this episode or last episode had even a sliver of intelligence, this never would have happened and Monarch would have failed. But this is 22nd out of a 27 episode long ranking video, so clearly my problems are deeper than just these minor nitpicks. This episode further demonizes Chloe, and I hate episodes that do this. Except for Queen Banana, because, well, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't really feel the need to go over all that here. You can just watch my Chloe video if you want my full thoughts. Regardless, I can't really take Chloe seriously as a villain. She's so often treated like a joke character that it's really weird to see her have an iron grip on the story. Chloe is still being used for storylines this late into the show and it's really exhausting, tiring, and she's really been bled dry of any narrative development at this point. But that's not the only stupid thing that happens. Ladybug and Cat Noir both get captured by Chloe via miraculous powers and they're they're about to detransform, but somehow they're able to fight off the detransformation sequence through sheer willpower. Gabriel asks rightfully how they've done this, and Nuru says that they've grown up somehow. And so Ladybug and Cat Noir escape the shield, and the people of Paris revolt and deacumatize Chloe. And we all know the story, Andre sends Chloe away with Audrey, yeah yeah yeah, we get it. And the episode ends with the class saying Miss Bustier should become the mayor. They say that she would be a great mayor, and we all know how that turned out. In this new school, there will be no classes or struggling to get good grades. Okay, I've been talking pretty negatively about revolution so far, but what makes it better than action, derision, recreation, confirmation, and representation? Would the person who carried this episode please show themselves? That's right, Lila basically carried this episode for me. Or should I call her Cerise? 
Yeah, I'm gonna stick with Lila. She only appears this episode for about five or six seconds at a time, but she has a pretty important role to play as Chloe's puppet master. She basically controls everything that Chloe says and does via an earpiece in order to get Monarch to akumatize her. And she orchestrated this set of events in order to get Sarugi-san's computer. And this gives her access to the aggressed mansion in the finale, leading her to get the butterfly miraculous. However, as I said in the recreation segment of this video, Lila's plans don't really feel that carefully thought out. Like I said before, she doesn't really feel like a cunning mastermind, it just feels like she's taking advantage of some really crazy coincidences. And while she did carry this episode, it wasn't that much of a heavy lift. She doesn't make this episode that much better, just a little bit better. Which is all I can really ask for with this. Moving on. Multiplication's biggest issue is being repetitive and boring. It picks up where Strike Back and Evolution left off, with Felix nabbing the dog Miraculous and the rest of the Miraculouses along with it. Suhon shows up and tells Ladybug that she's an idiot for losing the Miraculouses, and he's right, but once again Ladybug and Cat Noir undercut him. As is tradition with Suhon, he completely lets up and admits that Ladybug and Cat Noir were completely right and that he was in the wrong. And then he leaves, bouncing away to do absolutely nothing for the whole season. What was the point of this character to begin with? So then they track Felix down at his home address and find Amelie, Felix's mother, who says that Felix isn't there, but she's obviously lying. After this confrontation with Felix's mother, the episode kind of spins its wheels for most of the runtime. The gist is that Monarch hasn't attacked for a while, and so everybody's just kind of relaxing. And then Ikari Gozen shows up out of nowhere. They fight Ikari Gozen and realise that she has a miraculous power, but they don't really do much more than that. The fight is quite boring, honestly, in my opinion. So then they defeat Kagami's mother, and it turns out that she's working for Monarch. Yeah kind of predictable. <laughs> I don't really have that much more to say about multiplication to be honest, I mean it was just kind of a boring watch. But an episode being boring is better than it being infuriating, so moving on. Migration really did look a dirty in terms of his character. This is his second to last episode this season, and it's only midway through. This episode mainly focuses on Luca and his story and his personality, and yet all of it seems to ring hollow by the end of the episode, but let me explain. Bob Roth finds out that Luca is Jagged Stone's son and so wants to manage his music career without his friends. And so he tricks Luca into signing the band away with Bob Roth having all the rights to their music. Luca realises that he's made a big mistake in trusting Bob Roth, and so he almost gets akumatized by Monarch, but he manages to slip away because... I said something else. Panic. Fear. Why are you resisting so strongly? Do you have something to hide? You know the identities of Ladybug and Cat Noir! No, I'll never tell you! Never! Yeah, somehow Monarch is able to sense there's something deeper to Luca's resistance to getting akumatized. Why don't we break down how this doesn't make any sense? As I said before in the representation segment of this video, we learned that Kagami knew that Marinette was Ladybug in the episode Perfection and has been keeping it a secret all this time. And yet she gets akumatized twice this season, once in Perfection and once in Protection. And yet in neither of those episodes does Hawk Moth, sorry, Monarch, learn that there's anything deeper to Kagami's emotions. And yet, not even in Protection does Kagami release this knowledge to Monarch. Even when she thinks that Marinette is a bad person and that she's betrayed her too many times, she never ever says, is that she's Ladybug to Monarch. You'd think that while akumatized, Kagami would be willing to disclose something like that to the person who gave her superpowers. Even in the episode Derision, Marinette also almost gets akumatized, and she's clearly panicking at the thought of Monarch learning her identity while akumatized. And yet Monarch isn't able to sense that there's more to these emotions for either Kagami nor Marinette. So why is he suddenly able to with Luca in migration? It doesn't make any sense. Not to mention the fact that at the end of the episode, Luca realizes all of a sudden that it's too dangerous to be in Paris because Monarch knows that he knows that Ladybug and Cat Noir are Adrian and Marinette. And so he's written out of the show as he's gone to travel the world with Jagged Stone and Penny Rowling. Once again, the writers threw away a really amazing idea just because Luca could have been the new master food to Marinette and Adrian, giving them guidance while not disclosing that he knows who they are. Or heck, maybe he could disclose that he knows who they are. That would make things more interesting. After Wishmaker, Luca became one of the big 
big characters in my eyes, and then they threw him away. But I suppose that's to be expected. After all, being a Miraculous fan is pain. Okay, so what did I like about this episode? Well, Bob Ross was pretty entertaining. He never really gave up trying to get Luca to work with him, and it's really funny. But a few chuckles here and there doesn't save the episode from being this far down the list. Moving on. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but I really don't like elation. Fun fact, I could barely remember what happened in this episode, and so I re-watched it yesterday. And there were some parts of this episode where I just had to look away because I was feeling so uncomfortable. I just couldn't stomach how explicitly romantic Marinette and Cat Noir were getting sometimes. Now I understand that this is probably just a me problem, and most people love this episode, and they are not wrong for liking it. I need to make this really clear. Just like in my Psychomedian section in the Season 4 video, if you loved this episode, I really don't mind. This is just my personal opinion. And if you guys can watch Marinette kiss Cat Noir and then Cat Noir kiss Marinette, then you're just braver than me. It's just that passionate romance isn't what I'm looking for in a show. But I think there's more wrong with this episode than just that. Andre the Ice Cream Man is back, and once again, he's sticking his nose where it doesn't belong. He's upset that Cat Noir is going out with Marinette when he thinks that he should be in love with Ladybug. Like, get a life! Which teenager belongs with who is not any of your business, you sick freak! And of course he gets akumatized over this, because he did in season 4 and he's going to again because they're running out of ideas. Andre, go home. Or prison, I don't really care which. You just need a little bit of time away from your ice cream car and out of public eye so you can think about where you went wrong in your life. But that's basically all I have to say about this episode. Moving on. Confrontation is Lila's last hurrah. Well, not really, but it kind of is. Anyway, let me explain. This episode takes place after the end of Revelation, in which Lila and Chloe are made the new class representatives. They are entrusted with forms that the class fills out, explaining what they want to do for their future careers. Lila has Sabrina change it so that everyone's careers don't match what they actually want to do, and so they'll be sent to the wrong schools. And of course, they plan to frame Marinette for this whole thing. It doesn't make any sense how Lila is able to manipulate Marinette's friends and wrap them around her little finger. They should be able to see through such blatantly obvious lies and yet they never do because, I don't know, Lila slips something into their tea or something? They just take Lila's word for everything, but I should really get into all that in my future Lila video, which may or may not be coming next month, stay tuned. But anyway, the point is, Lila's grip on reality this episode is really strange. Marinette is accused by Lila and Chloe of forging the forms. Marinette says that Sabrina is the only one in the class capable of forgery. Lila tries to manipulate Sabrina into saying that Marinette is the one who wanted her to forge the fake forms. Sabrina says that Chloe and Lila forced her to do it. And the whole time, the class are just passive observers watching all of this happen. Can't Marinette's friends just use at least one iota of their critical thinking skills and realize that Lila is the one who did this? Apparently not, because when it comes to Lila, it seems that the class have the collective IQ of a fetus. Well, there is something good to come out of this episode. Lila threatens Sabrina and accidentally reveals her true nature in front of everybody. This was all a setup on Marinette's part and I couldn't be happier that Lila's finally getting what she deserved after seven years. Lila gets expelled and Chloe is given very special attention from Miss Bustier. Miss Bustier finally realizes that she's been way too lenient when it comes to Chloe and so vows to do better. But where does that leave Lila in all of this? The war is only just starting. Be ready. Oh Cerise, is your movie shoot over? We didn't think we'd see you again before the end of the school year. Yes! I moved heaven and earth so I could be back just in time for the teacher's rep meeting. Wait, what? That's right, Lila Rossi is just one of many of this girl's fake identities that she's made up herself. So it doesn't really matter that she was expelled, because she could just move on to a new identity and a new high school and mess with people there. It's such a weird premise and such a strange way to take her character, but... Honestly, I don't really mind. I'm more intrigued by Lila now than I ever was before. And I'm quite interested to see where they take her character going into season 6 and beyond. Oh yeah, Reflector's also here, but nobody cares because it has literally no bearing on this episode. Moving on. 
Yay, another Lila episode because you know how much I love those. Hooray! Okay, enough joking around. This episode isn't the worst Lila episode we've gotten. It focuses on how Lila and Gabriel's alliance has crumbled away. And so Lila is upset with him and plans to get revenge. You won't get rid of me that easily, monarch. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention Lila also knows that Gabriel is Monarch, but they don't really explain how. I guess we're not supposed to think about it. For some strange reason, this episode has a really big focus on Chloe and Sabrina. Miss Bustier realizes that Sabrina's been the one doing Chloe's homework and this gets an absurd amount of focus. Miss Bustier barely gives Chloe a scolding and Marinette chastises her for this. Lila somehow manages to manipulate the situation into making Marinette look bad, asking her why as class representative if she hasn't helped Chloe with her issues. Marinette says that Chloe doesn't have any issues, only privileges. And then Lila offers to become the new class representative, promising to change Chloe for the better. And for some reason, everybody agrees with this. So now Marinette is going to lose her role as class representative because of Lila's silver tongue. And for some reason, Marinette still hasn't told Alia about the whole Ladybug-Lila friendship thing. Yeah, remember in season 1 when Lila said that she was friends with Ladybug? And then in season 4 episode 3, Gang of Secrets, Marinette reveals to Alia that she's Ladybug. And yet for some reason, Marinette still hasn't told her about the lie that Lila said that she was friends with Ladybug and how obvious it is to disprove that. Lila's lies are so easy to disprove, it's insane. Her world will come crumbling down if somebody so much as opens their mouth and says that Lila's full of baloney. Okay, so what did I like about this episode? Predictably, it's when we stop with the stupid class representative plot and when Monarch enters the picture. Lila's plan was to have Monarch akumatize her, and that's exactly what happens. So Lila gets akumatized into Hoaxer, whose power is to mind control people if they see her on their alliance rings. Now you might be wondering why she wanted to get akumatized so badly. Well, it's because Hoaxer was planning on double-crossing Monarch. She mind controls Natalie into giving up all of Gabriel's secrets, taking pictures of them and sending them to her phone. This is like the first time that Lila has actually done something that I could truly call smart. As now, Lila knows about all of Gabriel's secrets and she might use them to her advantage. It really showcases how in the show, the villains aren't all friends and how they can also be enemies with each other as much as they clash with the heroes. But other than that, this episode is kind of annoying to watch because because of how Lila is able to trick everybody around her. And while this isn't the best Lila episode, it is far from the worst. So, let's move on. I will argue to the bitter end that Collusion is Lila's best episode. We learn that she has a secret underground lair in the catacombs of Paris, and that she's secretly been planning a lot of things for a lot of people for a long time. It's quite ironic that the first time Lila earns the title of Master Manipulator is when she drops the Lila disguise. Seeing how she controls everyone around her and manages to make everything go exactly according to plan is thrilling to watch, as no one is the wiser. Honestly, it reminds me of the kind of makeover that Felix got. In season 3 he was kind of a jerk, but then in season 4 he's become a very intelligent, sly, charismatic anti-hero. But I should really stop harping on about Lila because then I'll have nothing to say in her own video essay in a month, so let's talk about something else. Chloe is as annoying as she's ever been, especially in season 5, which I went on and on about in my Chloe video, but the difference is Miss Bustier is finally putting her foot down and not letting this go on. But Chloe's grip on the people around her due to Andre's power is absolute, and so she manipulates Miss Mandeleev into getting Miss Bustier fired unfairly. This means that she's almost akumatized by Monarch, but she manages to resist. Another important part of this episode is Gabriel trying to get Andre Bourgeois to buy his robots that he and Tsurugi-san made. Andre is skeptical and refuses initially, but Gabriel persists and tries to convince him to buy the robots. Andre, for the first time since the inception of the universe, becomes introspective and realizes that he's an awful person. He can't keep abusing his mayoral power anymore, and so he wants to make things right. It's a shame this is all happening way too late in the show's timeline for me to care. Like honestly, for 8 years he's been a horrible corrupt mayor and only now does he realise that he's taken things too far and that he should resign. Too little too late, Andre. An akumatized Miss Bustier, who wanted Andre out of office anyway, got what she wanted and so de herself. Ladybug and Count Noir are puzzled about how they were able to defeat the akumatized villain without the use of the lucky charm and wonder what it was for. And then all of a sudden- oh my gosh. For some incomprehensibly stupid reason, 
Chloe is the true threat of this episode. Like, that hasn't happened five billion times already. She slanders Ladybug and Cat Noir for siding with the akumatized villain in front of the French public, and then the stupidest thing happens. Chloe becomes the new mayor of Paris. What, what, what is happening? What is this world that we're living in? How on earth is anybody letting this happen? It makes no sense. Monarch's plan hinges on the assumption that the people are just going to blindly accept that a 14-year-old girl will be in office. I know that some degree of suspension of disbelief is mandatory when watching this show, but this is a step too far. Other than that, the episode's... Eh, I suppose, but that ending just ruins everything. Let's just hope the next episode we talk about makes more sense, right? Moving on. The first half of Destruction is amazing. Monarch shows up at Marinette's house because he asked the Kwamis where Ladybug lives. And so the Kwamis took him to Marinette's house, but don't worry, because it turns out the Kwamis are actually taking him on some kind of scavenger hunt where the ending will lead them to Ladybug's house. Seeing Monarch at Marinette's house, a place that we've become familiar with since season 1, was really scary because you don't know what Monarch is willing to do to get the information he wants. So eventually Monarch ends up at the Grevin Museum because this is where the final clue has led him. He grabs the final piece of paper from Cat Noir's statue's bell and then... So Monarch, I hear you've been looking for me. <laughs> it turns out the whole thing was a setup by Ladybug and Cat Noir in order to trap Monarch so that they could take the Miraculouses back from him. But this is where it all goes wrong for this episode. Instead of immediately stripping him of all of the Miraculouses, they just taunt him and talk about how the plan worked. What are you doing? Your plan worked! The Miraculouses are right there, right for the taking. Just do it! Stop taunting him and take the Miraculouses already! And of course, since they spent so much time taunting him, that gave Monarch an opportunity to stop them. He lets himself get Cataclysm so that the shock from the moment will allow him a window to escape. And to be honest, this is a pretty good scene as it really showcases how Cat Noir feels really guilty about accidentally cataclysming Monarch. And this episode is pretty important, paving the way for future episodes talking about Gabriel's cataclysm wound. But remember how I said that the first half of this episode is amazing? Yeah, the second half, not so much. We spend nearly all of it in Marinette's bedroom, with Marinette telling Alia how she created the plan. And they really go into detail about how Ladybug is going to bamboozle Monarch, showing us all the little details to their scheme. I don't understand why they're showing us how Ladybug put her blood, sweat and tears into a plan that didn't work. The plan was supposed to be able to capture Monarch's Miraculouses and all of the other Kwamis, and yet that's not what happened. The objective failed. So why are they showing me this? I don't really really care personally about how they did the plan because in the end none of it meant anything. Monarch got away after all. And I just found it really boring because all this boils down to is Marinette and Alia talking to each other for like 8 minutes. I'm not really sure how many people feel the same way I do about the second half of Destruction but if I'm in the minority, well... I don't really know what to say. There might be some people who disagree with me in regards to my opinions on Destruction and that's perfectly fine. So, let's move on. The number 14 spot is smack dab in the middle of the list. It's neither the best nor is it the worst, it's equal parts good and bad and I think that's where adoration belongs. There were some parts that I liked about it and there were parts that I was a bit unsure about. If I'm being perfectly honest I can barely remember what happened in this episode. So I feel like I'm going to need a bit of help again, so why don't we ask my brother again what he thought about adoration. Let's start with what he thought about the Chloe scene at the start. So were you annoyed about the fact that they continued to vilify Chloe? Yes. <laughs> What about the fact that she got angry at Marinette for stepping on her stairs? Doesn't that sound forced to you? That is a very petty thing for anyone to complain about. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now that my brother's gone, I'm going to have to tackle this all on my own. An issue I had with this episode is things kind of coming out of nowhere and not being foreshadowed. For example, Sabrina's whistle, which apparently means a lot to her, despite the fact that we've never seen her with it before. And Zoe's crush on Marinette also kind of came out of nowhere, if you ask me. But those are just minor nitpicks. 
other than that, this episode was kind of enjoyable. I enjoyed the fight against Vanisher, and the scene at the end of the episode with Gabriel controlling Adrian to come back inside the house was quite chilling. But other than that, this episode was kind of forgettable. Not good, not bad, just forgettable. And I don't really see myself coming back to watch it anytime soon. Moving on. Determination is one of the first episodes that introduces Adrian's newfound crush on Marinette, and it doesn't do much to justify it. Apparently his feelings changed when they went to the Greven Museum in the Puppeteer 2, which I will not be showing footage of for obvious reasons. So Adrian invites her to the Greven Museum to kind of work out their feelings, but Marinette is really nervous about it. I don't understand why Adrian fell in love with Marinette after she tried to kiss what she thought was a wax statue of him. Ugh. And judging by the way Marinette's been acting this episode, she doesn't understand it either. I think we could have used a more fleshed out reason and longer episode count in order to justify these feelings, but we don't get that. We're just supposed to accept that Adrian has a crush on Marinette all of a sudden post-multiplication. You're not actually trying to tell me that Adrian started having a crush on Marinette after the Puppeteer 2 in Season 3, right? Well, we're officially past the midpoint of the list, where episodes are more good than bad, so why is Determination up this high? Well, I really enjoyed the fight against the akumatized villain of the week, Manipula, who can bring wax statues to life. And so the wax statues of the superheroes become animated and Ladybug and Cat Noir have to fight their way through them. It's the embodiment of Ladybug's mistake, as she can see it right before her very eyes. Destroying the wax statues of the superheroes kind of reminds me of when Felix stole all of the Miraculouses, keeping them from being able to use them again. The first half of season 5 really focuses on Ladybug's guilt regarding being tricked by Felix. And it really comes to a head here in this episode, which I appreciate. I also appreciated that it was a new character who got akumatized, as season 5 was really plentiful in the reused villains department. I feel like this episode is kind of similar to Adoration in the way in which things kind of come out of nowhere and we're supposed to just accept them. However, in my opinion, I feel like Adoration is less good because Determination has more to stand on its own two feet with, for example, the fight against Manipula, which I personally prefer to the Vanisher fight because it was longer and more tense and had more stages. Unlike Destruction, I feel like my opinion on Adoration compared to Determination might be a bit contentious, so feel free to disagree with me if you feel that way. I don't mind. Opposing opinions are more than welcome on this channel. Moving on. Jubilation introduces a new character, Marinette's old friend from the last year of school, So Clean. She's been impersonating Ladybug in order to save people, and Marinette has a problem with that because she doesn't want ordinary people taking risks. And after the season 4 finale, yeah, I can see that. I like So Clean, she's an interesting new character with a good heart. And it was really nice to see her and Marinette catch up after not seeing each other for a while. It felt very real. So Marinette kind of goes off on So Clean and Mr. Damocles because she doesn't want ordinary people to play vigilant and this upsets Mr. Damocles, getting him akumatized into the Darker Owl. He gets given the power of jubilation from Monarch via the Alliance Rings, which allows him to give people the deepest wishes in their heart, causing them to become entranced in them. Something I like about this episode is that it does a good job making the Pig Miraculous not seem completely useless. The thing that makes the Pig Miraculous powerful isn't the fact that it shows you the deepest wish in your heart. It's the fact that while your deepest wish is being shown to you, you are completely on able to interact with reality, allowing the akumatized villain to easily get a hold of Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculouses. Now something I'm not really sure about with this episode is the dream sequence in itself. It was a little bit too over exaggerated, which yeah, dream sequence, but I feel like they took it a bit too far. I mean Ladybug and Cat Noir get married, they're like 14, and then they have a family and it's a whole thing. And Ladybug reciprocates Cat Noir's feelings towards her, which she never has before this point. However, other than that, that, I feel like this episode was quite inoffensive, so let's move on to the next episode. Protection is Kagami's second akumatized episode this season, which should be annoying, but for some reason it isn't. Maybe it's because during both episodes I can understand why she'd get akumatized. In this episode, Lila tries to manipulate Kagami into turning against Marinette. She does this to try and isolate Marinette to make it easier to ruin her life, because Lila is actually a monster. However, unlike other Lila episodes, I can see how Kagami would be fooled by her machinations. Lila mentions how Marinette only acts completely 
inept and clumsy in front of Adrian and that it's just a ruse in order to manipulate everybody else into helping her. Which I can believe, especially considering someone as sheltered as Kagami who can't pick up on the warning signs that someone is manipulating her. And so she gets kumatized into Repost Prime with the Turtle Miraculous' power of protection as an added bonus. And so Repost Prime goes to ambush Marinette and Adrian because Marinette is perceived as an evil manipulator in Kagami's eyes. I really like what this episode does to flesh out both Kagami and Marinette's friendship and gives them challenges and obstacles to really test it. So after they defeat Repost Prime, they had a lot of issues to work out. Marinette asks how Kagami could possibly think ill of her, to which Kagami responds that Lila told her. But Marinette and Adrian both assure Kagami that Marinette would never do anything to hurt anybody. This causes Kagami to break down in guilt after realizing that she lost faith in one of her best friends because of Lila. And so the friends make up. For some reason, however, Kagami still offers to be Lila's friend after all of this. I guess Lila still has what Cyrus the Great calls Mary superpowers. Other than that, I quite enjoyed the Marinette and Adrian story this episode. They really want to be together despite the fact that Gabriel disapproves of their relationship and they're willing to do whatever it takes to stay together, even if it means going against Gabriel's wishes. It also showcases some character development for Marinette as she stopped trying to create elaborate plans to get with Adrian. It's quite nice to see her just take things as they are and not be so stressed whenever she's around Adrian. The episode showcases Adrian trying to break away from his father's influence and live his own life like a few other episodes before it have done, and it makes it clear just where Adrian stands in the conflict between Marinette and Gabriel, as he's firmly on her side and wants to be with her. So yeah, not much more to say other than that, this was a pretty good episode but there are better ones. Moving on. How fitting, the 10th episode of the season is in 10th place. Transmission, the first part of the two-parter Kwame's Choice special. It takes place after elation, in which Marinette gave up falling in love with Cat Noir because it didn't work out. And now both she and Adrian are upset that their love lives aren't really working out. And so Tiki and Plague decide to take the Miraculouses from Adrian and Marinette because they think that they're holding them back from living their lives. This is an interesting angle to take, examining just how the Miraculouses have affected them mentally and emotionally and kept them from chasing opportunities in their lives. So Adrian and Plague give their Miraculouses to Alia and Zoe. Okay, Alia I can understand as they were together before in Haxan when she was Scarabella. But why does Plague choose Zoe? It doesn't really feel natural or earned in any way. My mild annoyance with Zoe's forced prominence is really the only nitpick I have with this episode. The fight against the akumatized villain of the week, Kiku, was very interesting to watch. I think what made this fight interesting to me is the fact that we weren't seeing Ladybug and Cat Noir fight Kiku, but rather a new pair of heroes, Scarabella and Kitty Noir. There's over a hundred episodes of Ladybug and Cat Noir fighting villains, so it's really interesting when they try to shake things up like this. Scarabella and Kitty Noir work very well together, and I kind of wish that we got to see more of them teaming up instead of it just being for the Kwame's Choice special. Now this is just the first part of the two-part to Kwame's Choice special, and I'd argue that it's the inferior part. There isn't as much that goes on in this episode compared to Deflagration, but that's not really a sin in the episode itself, more of a testament to how good Deflagration is. This episode was more of a character building setup episode more than it was an action packed final episode and I personally prefer it when more interesting things are happening on screen than characters sitting around and talking to one another but that's okay because that's not what transmission is trying to be so it's good in its own way. Moving on. <laughs> Intuition is a very tense episode to watch because it makes itself very clear about what it's trying to tell the audience. That being that Gabriel is running out of time due to the cataclysm wound on his arm slowly draining his life away. We learn that he's been using the power of the snake to reverse time very frequently and that it's accelerating the time in which his cataclysm wound is going to kill him. Honestly at this point I don't really feel like Gabriel has much of a choice. If he doesn't get the Miraculouses he and Natalie are going to die. So I definitely understand his unwillingness 
willingness to give up, especially considering the fact that he's going to lose everything if he does so. And so he plans to remotely hack a spaceship so that Ladybug and Count Noir will be lured into space so that he can take their miraculouses there. I think the best part about this episode is showcasing every little bit of Gabriel's plan and how it all comes crumbling in the end. However, it's very interesting to see him at least try to get the miraculouses in an intelligible way. And yet, every single time that something goes wrong in the plan, he uses second chance again and again, despite the effect it's having on his health. I really enjoyed seeing Gabriel almost come to ruin because of his mistakes and the risks that he's taking. And the fact that Ladybug and Cat Noir still managed to win over him really makes things unfair in my eyes because he's trying so hard this time. This episode showed us everything from Gabriel's perspective and he was basically the main character this episode, which never happens. I like it when characters who aren't Ladybug and Cat Noir get the spotlight, giving us a deeper insight into characters who we really only know because of their cliche appearances in other episodes. For example, Monarch sending out an Akuma every episode makes things more interesting. And it's great that this episode does what it does in fleshing out Gabriel's problems. So yeah, overall it was a very good episode, but there are better ones. So let's talk about those, shall we? Moving on. You know, it's funny, for an episode called Perfection, it's not number one on the list. Eh, I'm just joking. This episode is still pretty good, even if it's not perfect. The episode follows Marinette being upset that she can't talk to Adrian, and neglecting Kagami's calls because she thinks that she's going to think that she's stupid. Now, if you think that's a bit of an absurd premise, yeah, it is, but somehow they managed to make it work. We spend a majority part of the episode with Marinette and Adrian as the friends try to get them together, and this part of the episode is honestly kind of boring, that's not why it's up this high. Marinette and Kagami's friendship carried this episode for me. Marinette spends the whole episode avoiding Kagami because she thinks that Kagami is going to get upset that Marinette still hasn't confessed her feelings to Adrian, especially considering everything she sacrificed for her to do so. But being ghosted by Marinette causes Kagami to think that Marinette isn't her friend anymore, which isn't helped thanks to... It turns out the whole time Lila was manipulating Kagami again just like she was in protection. She gave Kagami a list of everything that a bad friend would do I suppose and Marinette somehow managed to tick all the boxes. This broke Kagami because it confirmed her worst fear that Marinette wasn't her friend and that she wasn't worthy of any friendship. The fact that Marinette and Kagami were both scared of disappointing each other just goes to show just how much they care about one another and the idea that this friendship was all a lie is enough to get Kagami akumatized. Which, let's just talk about that akumatized villain for a second. Ryuka Mori is one of the most unique akumatized villains we've ever seen and she's not hostile at all. She's incapable of seeing or hearing anyone or anything and she just walks around Paris reminiscing about things in her life. And so Ladybug and Cat Noir can't just use brute force to fight her, they have to find a way to get through to Kagami. And the only way to defeat Ryuka Mori was to remind Kagami about how much she's valued by everyone around her, causing her to break free of Monarch's control herself. Kagami carried this episode for me, even in spite of that Adrian song. Ugh. Anyway, there's not much more to say about this episode, so let's move on to the next one. I actually really enjoyed Illusion, believe it or not. Sure, it's not the most complex episode, but I think it had a very unique and interesting premise. Nino starts an organization in the school called The Resistance, which is supposed to help Ladybug and Cat Noir defeat Monarch. Their first mission is to figure out how Monarch is able to transfer miraculous powers to akumatized villains. And to do this, they come up with a kind of unethical motivation. That being the deliberate cause of an akumatization at their hands. And so they choose Gabriel Agrest as their target. Target. This is the worst idea I've ever heard. They deliberately try to make him angry so they can find out how Monarch transfers the powers to him if he gets akumatized. But Gabriel manages to resist getting angry for quite a long time, which is a neat segue into talking about what I liked about this episode. Gabriel. This episode showcases a major shift in Gabriel's personality. He's brighter, more upbeat, and kinder to Adrian. And he's spending his time cooking breakfast for him. He even says to Adrian, 
and that he can call him dad instead of father, displaying a level of warmth and care that we've never really seen from the guy before, and the implication that he's only acting like this because he wants Adrian to have good memories of him before the cataclysm wound kills him prematurely is quite bittersweet. And it makes it all the more interesting later in the episode when the resistance deliberately tries to get him akumatized, because Gabriel's trying so hard to keep it together for Adrian's sake. And so when he finally snaps, it's a sign that the resistance have gone too far and potentially irreparably damaged Adrian's relationship with his father. And so Monarch capitalizes on the situation by using the Fox Miraculous to create an illusion of the Collector to make it seem as though Gabriel was akumatized, while also successfully tricking the resistance into thinking miraculous powers are transferred via lightning instead of the alliance rings. The dichotomy of Gabriel's sweet side with Adrian and his malevolent, malicious, evil side with Monarch makes this episode an interesting watch. And I personally believe that it deserves to be this high for that alone. So let's move on, shall we? Reunion is an episode about the past and the present. It's about the past ladybug, Joan of Arc, and how the people perceived her, and it's about public perception to the present ladybug, which isn't doing so great ever since Monarch stole all of the Miraculouses from them. The first thing I liked about Reunion is that it showed us that there is some criticism garnered towards Ladybug. It's pretty realistic. I mean, of course not everybody would like Ladybug after a massive blunder such as this. And Alex's older brother Jaleel is an interesting vector for this story. In Evolution, Alex finally uses the Rabbit Miraculous and has to stay in the burrow until Monarch is defeated, keeping her from seeing her family again. And so struck with grief, Jaleel believes that Ladybug tricked Alex, and believes that Monarch might not be such a bad guy after all for some stupid reason. And so believing that there's no other option to achieve his happy ending, he asks Monarch to akumatize him into the Pharaoh again. Now this is something that a lot, a lot of people have really touched on in my opinion, but I think that it deserves a bit of an analysis. We're in a very unique position because we're seeing someone who wants to be akumatized who isn't really evil at all. Normally when Whenever we see a character who wants to be akumatized, it's an evil villainous character like Natalie, Lila or Chloe. But Jaleel is just a disillusioned young man who misses his sister, and he sees Monarch as a way to get what he wants rather than the other way around. It's a more nuanced look at the topic of intentional akumatization, but that's not the main thing nor is it the only thing that I like about this episode. In this episode we meet Joan of Arc, the past Ladybug Miraculous Holder. She's an interesting character and it's nice to see Tiki reunite with someone from her past who she's so close to. And yet the the reason Marinette summoned her using her Quagatama is because she wanted to know if any Ladybug Miraculous Holders fell in love with any Black Cat Miraculous Holders in the past. And just like me, she thinks that's a stupid reason to have her summoned back. And yet the novelty of seeing a past Ladybug Miraculous Holder is too strong to ignore and so I'm willing to look past this stupid idea. Besides, Ladybug consulting with past users of her Miraculous is something I've wanted for seasons now so I'll take it, wherever it is. And then at the end of the episode we got some backstory for Joan of Arc which felt very totally dis distinct from the rest of the show, and so I really appreciate it. So yeah, I think I've said just about enough about Reunion. Moving on. Pretension is an episode that really works to humanize Felix, which I really appreciate. In this episode, Felix wants to protect Kagami from her mother to try and set her free. And what I love about this is that it officially cements Felix as the anti-hero of the show. Because I'm sure we can all understand that kidnapping someone isn't exactly an ethically righteous thing to do. But Felix does what's best for himself and those he believes are like him. And so it makes perfect sense as to why he'd resort to kidnapping Kagami in order to get her away from her mother, because he doesn't really know any better because of his skewed moral compass. And Kagami's mother is so enraged that Felix kidnapped her daughter that she gets akumatized by Monarch into Matagi Gozen to try and find her. And Ladybug and Cat Noir have to defeat Matagi Gozen while also trying to get the Peacock Miraculous back from Felix. We've got three different moralities at play here during this battle and it's really fun to watch. Felix isn't on the side of Monarch nor is he on Ladybug and Cat Noir's side. He's rogue and he's on his own. He's a morally grey character whose allegiances you can never truly understand. Honestly, at the end of season 4, I was kind of worried that they were just going to dumb him down to be Monarch's ally, and I'm so glad that they decided against that. And it's quite nice to see that Dusu is finally in good hands. Kind of. This episode also gives us a good reason as to why Felix wanted the Peacock Miraculous in the first place. He wanted the Senti Monsters to have freedom and control over their own lives. I refuse to create a being to manipulate them, control them, abuse them, and end up destroying them. 
Felix has seen people like Gabriel create senti monsters, twist them to his personal desires, and end up destroying them once they've outlived their usefulness, and he wants no stake in that. It's a very interesting reason as to why Felix would take the Peacock Miraculous, as he doesn't feel like Gabriel is worthy of using it because of the way he treats the senti monsters he creates. But that's not the only thing I liked about this episode. I really enjoyed the talk that Marinette and Gabriel had in the kitchen. Despite the fact that I believe these two aren't exactly emotionally charged rivals like I think Adrian and Gabriel would have been in the finale, I do believe there is some rivalry there. Gabriel is a fashion designer and Marinette is aspiring to be one, so there is a contrast there that we can examine. Marinette designs clothes in order to make people happy, whereas Gabriel designs clothes in order to gain more power in the cultural landscape. It's an interesting dichotomy that a lot of episodes have neglected to talk about up until now. This and the Felix scenes in this episode make pretension a very worthwhile watch that I would highly recommend. Moving on. The very first episode of season 5, Evolution, is, in my opinion, a very strong start to the season. We follow Ladybug, Cat Noir, and the newly introduced Monarch as they travel through time because Gabriel realised that the power of the Rabbit Miraculous is just too strong to ignore. Seeing Ladybug, Cat Noir, and Monarch all travel through time while trying to get each other to stop manipulating the time periods at which they fall into is really fun. This episode also has a little bit of character development for some of our characters. Ladybug learned from her mistakes in season Paul and is considering Cat Noir as a worthy member of the team, giving him the Rabbit Miraculous to take control over once Bullix is venomed. This will allow Ladybug and Cat Noir to follow Monarch through time and preventing him from getting any advantages over them. And because Monarch is using so many Miraculouses at once, it starts to take a toll on his physical health. But he's so determined to get the Miraculouses to save his wife that he's completely ignorant to all of the damage he's causing himself and others. Speaking of his wife, we finally get to see her and Gabriel in the past. Gabriel gets an idea from Natalie to go back in time and give past Gabriel the USB stick containing the solution to fixing the Peacock Miraculous. Past Gabriel seems like a nice man, and so does Emily, so I can understand why Monarch would want to bring her back at all costs. But just as he's about to give the USB drive to past Gabriel, he sees a miracle box, and knows that Ladybug and Cat Noir are probably trapping him, but he just can't resist the urge to try and defeat them. The three have been fighting for seasons at this point, so it makes sense that Gabriel's priorities would shift to 40% defeat Ladybug and Cat Noir and 60% save his wife. So Gabriel follows Ladybug and Cat Noir into a separate timeline where he gets ambushed predictably, and so they manage to steal the Rabbit Miraculous back from him. Gabriel is upset about this because he was one micrometer away from victory. Natalie calls Gabriel, asking if the plan worked, to which Gabriel says that Ladybug tricked him. Gabriel demands that Natalie come up with a new plan for him, to which Natalie says that she's done helping him because he really messed up this time. He could have defeated Ladybug and Cat Noir if only he gave the USB drive to past Gabriel, and he couldn't even do that. Seeing Natalie abandon Gabriel for the first time in five seasons was really interesting to watch, and made me wonder who was going to help Gabriel now or if he was just going to strike it out on his own. This episode did a lot to shake up the formula and so I really appreciate it. And it set the stage for future episodes to come. Moving on. You better believe that after Evolution, I wanted to see more of Natalie's story once she betrayed Gabriel, and boy does passion deliver. We see Natalie confront her past with Gabriel and his wife, and how much they truly meant to her. There's a lot of pushback from Natalie this episode in terms of how Gabriel treats Adrian, which should have been happening a few seasons ago, but I'll take what I can get. The scene in the kitchen is actually my favourite scene this episode because there's a lot of hidden tension between Gabriel and Natalie. They try to hide their issues from Adrian, but once he's out of the room, Natalie pins Gabriel down to the table and tells him how she really feels. She tells Gabriel that he used to do all of this out of love for Emily, but now he's only doing it out of madness, and he's not going to be helped by her anymore. She tells Gabriel to move on from Emily's death, just like Emily herself did, but Gabriel refuses. Gabriel says that he has no choice but to keep going because of the cataclysm wound, which kind of puts Natalie in an impossible position. Does she correct her moral compass and stop helping Gabriel, or let herself and Gabriel die? She chooses to split the difference and help Gabriel 
will, but not in the way that he's expecting her to. He akumatizes her into a villain called Safari, whose power is never missing a target. And so she goes after Ladybug and Cat Noir, demanding the Miraculouses from them. But then something very interesting happens. She reveals that she's not planning on giving the Miraculouses to Monarch, but to use them herself. She also threatens to tell Ladybug and Cat Noir who Monarch is if Monarch tries to stop her. Natalie's become a far better character now, and is very reminiscent of Felix. Neither of them are allies of Monarch, but they are merely using him to achieve their own goals. But Natalie's not the only good part about this episode, so is Adrian. He sees Natalie as a surrogate mother, and so Natalie's sickness is starting to worry him. This episode focuses on their relationship as a surrogate mother and son, and it's really appreciated because it's not something that gets touched on very often in the show. Not only that, but to avoid Safari's traps, Ladybug and Cat Noir swap their Miraculouses again in order to transform into Lady Noir and Mr. Bug. This allows Adrian to finally get the spotlight in defeating a villain, which is something that I really appreciate, which I've said before, but that's because I mean it. Even if Adrian absolutely 100% deserved to be in the finale and play a pivotal role in recreation, at least he had this episode. So yeah, Passion is a very good episode and it gives spotlight to two characters who don't really get it and gives them character development that they desperately needed. Moving on. Deflagration, the second part of the Kwame's Choice special, is a very amazing episode, and it feels more like the season finale than the actual season finale does. We follow Alia and Zoe in their new roles as superheroes since Marinette and Adrian have given up their miraculouses to live their love story. It's nice to see how being superheroes has impacted their lives and their relationships with their Kwamis. Zoe and Plague get along very well because Zoe lives at a hotel where there's a large assortment of cheeses for Plague to consume, and of course Ali and Tiki get along because of all the time they've spent together in the previous season. Honestly, I know that I keep saying this, but I just like it when novel things happen in these episodes because the show is so formulaic. And so seeing Marinette and Adrian give up their responsibility as superheroes in order to live out their lives that they want to lead is very nice to see. Not only that, but Gabriel is able to discern that Zoe and Alia are actually Scarabella and Kitty Noir by picking up on the activity their alliance rings gave to him. And he's... Um, <clears throat> mildly infused about this information. <laughs> So Gabriel decides to capitalize on knowing the new hero's identities by ambushing them at their school. He uses the mouse and rooster powers to turn small and invisible and give himself multiple copies so that he could stalk the heroes without them seeing. Then he akumatizes Chloe into Soul Destroyer so that Zoe and Alia go to transform where he ambushes them. Tiki, spot Venom! Two down. That's right, Gabriel finally got the Miraculouses and he's about to make his wish to reshape the world as he sees fit. Tiki and Plague try to resist the transformation sequence initiated by Monarch and Tiki manages to send a lucky charm to Marinette in order to get her to save everyone. However, they used both of their powers without a holder, Plague cataclysming the ring so that Gabriel can't interact with it and Tiki lucky charming her way to Marinette. So now it's up to Marinette to save everyone and the world has been messed up so that might be pretty difficult. Difficult. However, she goes to fight Monarch herself as Ladybug. Well, not quite Ladybug, but she dresses up as Ladybug, so that kind of counts. And so Marinette and the resistance that was introduced in Illusion fight Monarch to try and get the Ladybug and Black Cat Miraculouses back from him. I really enjoyed the fight as it was rather unconventional and had high stakes regardless because of the world being destroyed and created at the same time. They managed to take back the Miraculouses from Monarch using the help of the resistance and they end up returning them to Marinette and Adrian, realizing that they're better off for protecting Paris rather than leaving it to somebody else. Overall, Deflagration was a very enjoyable episode, and it was great to see Monarch finally win, and yet still the heroes triumph. Almost all of the main characters get some specific character development pertaining to them. Ladybug and Monarch fight for the first time since evolution. The plot actually goes somewhere for a change. It's all you could ever want from an episode. And it's only number two on the list. I feel like that's a testament to how good number one is, in my opinion. So, let's talk about... Number one. Oh, I can see, and all that matters. All is not gold, not glitters. Everything I want shall be mine forever. At the snap of my fingers, so why not fly like a butterfly, riding high above the sky? But from here, I look down to earth. 
my fingers while I've been doing all the dust to the But I've been a Emotion is a phenomenal episode that I can't even begin to describe how much I love. Everything about it is just so perfect. From the characters to the story to the animation, my goodness is this episode greatly animated. But I think I'll start with the story. Marinette learns that Adrian is being forced to attend an event called the Diamonds Dance, which is an event where rich people go with their children. And this is the first point that I want to make, because Marinette didn't know that this was happening because she's finally stopped stalking Adrian and following his timetable. It's such a mark of growth from her previous actions in past seasons, and I love it. Alright, I have to keep myself in check here. I can't get distracted by every little thing that I love about emotion. So let's move on. Marinette wants to go to the Diamonds Dance in order to support him and reassure him that it's okay that he wasn't able to tell her. With Zoe's help, Marinette is able to infiltrate the dance by impersonating as her. She disguises herself and mingles with the guests for a little bit, including Chloe who doesn't recognize her. Marinette eventually catches up to Adrian and tells him that she loves him and will always be there for him, even if Gabriel is still pulling the strings of his life. Which nicely brings us to what makes this episode so great. Felix. See, it turns out that the Adrian that was at the Diamonds Dance was actually Felix in disguise, who infiltrated the party in order to execute his grand plan. To use his senti monster, Red Moon, to bathe everybody in a red light that will allow him to snap his fingers and make them disappear. So let's just take a bit of time to analyse Felix's character this episode. He's actually killing people, and a lot of people, but why is he doing this? It's so that he, Kagami and Adrian will be the only ones left on the earth so that they can finally be be free. So Felix's motivation for doing this was to live in a free world with Adrian and Kagami, his fellow senti monsters. And it is very heavily implied that Adrian, Kagami and Felix are all senti monsters, yes. Earlier, Ladybug was unable to defeat Felix because her lucky charm didn't give her anything. And so Felix snaps her out of existence now he's won. He's accomplished what he set out to do, so how are we going to defeat him? Well, it turns out, he kind of defeats himself. Since he did this for Adrian and Kagami, once those two make it clear that what he's done is actually horrible, he reverses everything out of guilt. It also doesn't help that by snapping Ladybug out of existence, he's unknowingly gotten rid of Marinette as well, who he saved for Adrian because she meant so much to him. And so he brings everybody back of his own volition. Marinette comes to see Adrian Kagami and they embrace her because they're so relieved that she's safe. Felix, seeing all of the damage that the Peacock Miraculous has done, goes to talk to his sentient monster Red Moon. He has an epiphany that the Peacock Miraculous is kind of terrifying, creating a living being that you can control at will and destroy when you see fit. It reminds him too much of his own existence as a senti monster. And now the only way to make things right is to destroy his senti monster. Basically his sibling. And him being a senti monster makes it very easy to see why he started grieving when he destroyed his senti monster. Because they're the same species. He feels their pain. And so he hates people like Gabriel who just use senti monsters as a means to an end. A complex layered antagonist that emotion is home to as as well as the fact that Ladybug had to rely on Felix's moral compass in order to defeat him, makes Emotion the best episode of season 5, in my opinion. Thank you all so much for watching this video. It took me such a long time to make and I barely managed to get enough time to work on it, but I'm glad that I did. And I also want to thank you for all of the support that you've shown the Chloe video. I think it's got over 7,000 views at the time that I'm reading this. It really means the world to me. Thank you all so, so much. My favorite comment was the comment telling me that they actually enjoyed Chloe being a villain. I really appreciated the differing perspective. Thank you, Mimi Koi7380, if that's how you pronounce it. This has been a critical retrospective, and I'll see you in the next video essay.